The big news in the TM Master Cup series for the past month has been the customer car controversy involving Flash Racing, Tagamo Enterprises, Team Sai USA, Camelot Racing, and Rick Milligan Racing. The two Inglesby teams, Flash Racing and Owen Tagamo Enterprises, were found innocent in that uh, investigation. And cars from Team Sai USA, Camelot Racing, and Rick Milligan Racing were confiscated before the round in Japan, and those three teams weren't exactly breaking the rules. All three cars were based off of the 2009 Saar Tyrant, and while there were several parts of the car that seemed a little bit fishy to the inspectors, there was no concrete proof that those parts had been in those cars for the entire season, and so Team Saar USA, Camelot Racing, and Rick Milligan Racing got away with no penalty. And I have to admit, I think they're rather lucky. Also, Lastro Autosport and Autosport and Manos Gutierrez were granted to the two grid slots that had been vacated by Trevor Carrington for the remaining three races. Lastro Autosport will continue to field Dan McKay in car number 20. The Gutierrez brothers, on the other hand, are fielding a car number 64, rookie Cesar Villanova. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. Taking out the Delano Polaroid in an awesome job, car number 11, Ethan Everett for Rick Milligan Racing. This is the same country that he won his very first and only Master Cup Series race in to date. Everett leads the field to the green flag in car number 11. Kurt Pliskin the outside of the front row. Tom Delgado in row 2. And here is car number 11, Ethan Everett, as he leads the field coming into turn 2. Delgado hooks him, and Everett goes into the wall. Second corner, Everett's in trouble. No caution. I don't know what Tom Delgado was thinking there. Surely that has to be some form of penalty because the officials generally don't take too well to running into other cars on the first lap. Everett came into this race fifth in points. However, this brought out the first caution. Marcus Leonard, car triple nine, second in points coming into this race, gets into the back of car number 60. Caesar Villanova, the rookie, making his debut. Villanova goes off, coming down into the quad oval, taking out Robert Dorian and Gaspar D'Souza. All three would continue on, but Marcus Leonard in car triple nine uh, basically drove straight through the back of Villanova, who had made a very slow start. Matthias Taub had been leading up to the first lap, and everyone hit the pit lane. Fuel is very much a concern here. There are people fearing a long green flag run could make a... Um, oh, wow, what's the Kumi Nagata doing in that 24 car? Just brake checks Ethan Everett under the yellow flag. That seems a bit out of hand there. Danny Sabin is the first casualty on the restart, as his Lennard R37 predictably blows up. That seems to be the thing that, that the R37 has been better at than anything else this season. Alexis Rainsford is back in this race in car number one. She uh, just got out of a champ car race a week ago, and she was just clear to drive after a massive crash, one of the most frightening incidents I've ever seen um, in my time covering racing. But here she is. Uh, she's been very sore all weekend in this number one car, but she qual didn't qualify all that well. Uh, they were having some problems with that car, but uh, she's clearly uh, not going forward a whole lot. Clearly sliding backwards. Here's Dan McKay in that 20 car. Those are the two Tutinos of VJ Pashanda, former Formula A driver, won the USGP some uh, years ago, and Azuma Kazuyama in the 43 car. Both of them were surprisingly quick in practice. Michael Sykes left the 45 team after the round of British Columbia. Chris Allen and a sponsor were able to obtain the ride. Chris Davenport is introduced to the wall thanks to Scott Hamilton after he is in, well, looks like Davenport has chopped off Scott Hamilton there. Uh, uh, use your mirror, son. I think you kind of deserve that. There was no yellow for that, as a, but there was a yellow for something else on lap 11, and this again involves Caesar Villanova. However, Villanova cut a tire, and there was debris all over the racetrack. Villanova pulled the car off the course, and the yellow came out. Under the yellow flag, however, Dan McKay in the 20 car mysteriously pushes up the track, takes himself Avery Holtzman, Alan Hodges, Azuma Kazuyama, and Chris Allen hard into the wall in turn 6. This is the 6 turn racetrack. And, uh, well, Dan McKay, uh, well, we know what the penalty is for causing a wreck under the yellow flag now, don't we? Tell that to Luciano Salvarol as well. He gets into the back of Craig Mummerton's Mummert up into Tom Delgado. Delgado goes into the wall. Now, Delgado had a great run to the start of this race, and uh, that's coming to a very quick end. Uh, Luciano Salvarol was very apologetic over the radio, and he and Craig Mummert are teammates over at the Bolton Speed Stable, so I really don't know what was going on over there. Chris Allen, car 45, pulls into his teammate, Gaspar D'Souza. Wow, that's second. Oh, Devereaux's in it! The points leader, Adrian Devereaux, car number 26, got a piece of that. Chris Allen pulled right into his teammate, Gaspar D'Souza. Looked like Allen felt he had a tire going down. Pulled into the pits, spins right in front of the points leader, who I think thought he was going to miss that. So Devereaux's day goes sour very early on. Franz Redlick in the 94 leads on the restart after some cars decide to pit and some cars don't. 
and that 94 car has been quicker than usual. Uh, Redlick will be leaving this team at the end of the year because he's being replaced by Matthias Taub and Arto Kakinen over at uh, the Gessler team. And Adrian Devereaux pitted on the restart, meaning that Devereaux would be praying for a caution because he was way back. He's still on the lead lap, but uh, he can see the leaders in his rearview mirrors. Fortunately, the racing gods were smiling on Devereaux today because he got a caution on lap 19. This clip is at slow motion. We're looking at Yuliana Sova in car 34. Coming out up into turn four, through turn five, she gets bumped by Scott Stoiler. Kazuyama in another incident. Lewis Kingston in the 44 car gets some damage as well. Uh, Stoiler clipped the back of the 34, and that's what triggered that one off. And uh, uh, Nasova just lost after that. It was, Nasova was kind of on her own missile. Stoiler clearly just turns right into the 34 car. Kazuyama goes for a wild ride. So does Lewis Kingston. Taub, great job missing that. Matthias Taub, uh, great job in uh, paying attention there and uh, well Dan McKay stayed out on uh, this caution and he's leading the pack he's got so much damage and uh, that car has been so dreadfully slow anyway that McKay is just uh, getting in the way really Villanova not having too many problems dispatching him Chris Hans in the 64 goes by to take over the lead there's Craig Mummert in the six car and Leonid Roderick in that red number four in the uh, turbocharged car the launch turbocharged car but we had a fourth caution on lap 24 a little early for four yellows Kurt Pliskin, car 16, is going to be involved in this one after he gets uh, hit by uh, Takumi Nagata. I think he made contact with Robert Dorian in the 47 car. That looked like his... Oh, wow. Chris Davenport uh, seemed to have been fighting that turn 5 wall quite frequently. He crashed there twice in practice. And here's Chris Davenport. Um, uh, gets in the back of Yamino Tenshi, realizing Scott Hamilton's behind him, looks like, finally. And, uh, yeah, Davenport just lost that one. Kurt Pliskin, uh, not really sure why... Uh, he ran straight into the 27 car like that. Uh, Davenport's car is a solid object, you know, Kurt. Pace car hits the pit lane onto the re... Are you kidding me? We have a wreck on the restart. Tony Durbin gets turned around by Marcos Leonard. Marcus in that triple nine car, second in the point standings. I'm not sure if that counts as a crash under causing a collision under yellow, to be quite honest with you, because that is coming to a restart. I haven't seen this in quite some time. And it looks like Marcus has a flat tire or something, and he's trying to get to the pit lane, but the 33 isn't giving him any room. And clearly, Marcus is irritated by that. Pulls right in front, right into Tony, and spins Tony out. Tony Durbin apparently thought Scott Stoidler caused that one, but uh, apparently he was corrected on that. Finally, we get an actual restart here. Craig Mummert in the six car is in the lead of the race. Craig Mummert's had several good runs um so far this season mostly on the ovals well if this track is kind of an oval it's a, kind of an inverted quad oval with a uh, rather spectacular drop here lap 34 just past the one third mark of this race craig mummert in car number six is still in the lead with chris johans right behind him there is a big jam up for third and fourth zelda ashby is uh not quite as fast as some of the cars behind her but ashby is doing a good job of being a rolling roadblock and that's sort of what you have to do if you're defending your position so, Craig Mummert in the lead. There you see Ian Cooper having a strong run in fifth. Alexis Rainsford utilizing pit strategy. Shane Lake and Dan McKay having strong, strong runs. Taylor Silverman, an independent trophy contender, running 18th. And you'll also notice Mike Whitmore and Bobby Porto having strong runs. We ride on board with Adrian Devereaux, who is sliding backwards. He is going the wrong way in this 26 car. He's trying to attack Julian Nasova there, but Nasova's got the better run off the corner. These are very flat turns. The only reason we're here is due to earthquake damage to the twin ring Motegi. Um, and here is Franz Redlick, who's having an awesome race so far. Two laps ago, he was 21st. So, Redlick is clearly clawing his way through the field. Now he's seventh, right behind Gaspar D'Souza in car number 40, who is off the lead lap. Um, D'Souza has been involved in some silliness under the yellow flag. There's Leonid Roderick and Arto Kekkonen doing battle for position into um, uh, launched uh, turbocharged cars. Here's Ian Cooper in the 777 car, stuck behind the lapped car of Carlos Donzello. He's in fifth place. There goes Redlick in that 94 Gessler. That Gessler power goes right on by. Speaking of Gessler, it's a shame Avery Holtzman didn't have a chance to show what the Gesslers really could do because Holtzman was quickest in final practice. So, um, well, Holtzman's pointless streak continues. Here comes Franz Redlick around Zelda Ashby. Here you see Lena Roderick in that red and black car creeping in. Scott Bates' day goes sour after the engine blows up when he was running 14th. Bates has not won a race in almost two seasons. Here's Zach Duff and Alexis Rainsford running nose to tail. Duff is a lap down in 30th place. Here's Dan McKay running into the back of Dale Roswell. I don't think Roswell's going to take too uh, well to that. 
This is a career day for Craig Mummer. Despite that collision with his teammate Luciano Savaral, he's doing a great job. Interestingly enough, uh, this car has actually gotten faster since Luciano Savaral ran into him under yellow, so, uh, hmm. I wonder if uh, that might have been on purpose there. We'll have to see about that. Here's Arto Kakin in the, in the uh, sugar free turbocharged car, running in ninth place. He set the fastest laps of the race so far. Arto clearly is on the charge. Now remember, Arto Kekkonen is in contention for the Master Cup Series Drivers Championship, and with Adrian Devereaux having a bad day, well, there's clearly a lot of points on the table just waiting to be picked up. And Craig Mummert, at halfway, is still leading and on his way to picking up a good deal of points. We're not quite sure what Mummert's doing next season. He has a couple of offers from other teams. I wonder if some of that's due to the fact that he has a Bolden engine deal with him, pretty much, for whatever team decides to pick him up. I'd say he's doing a very good job so far in this six car, but there are some other strong contenders um, for another seat in the Master Cup Series that he appears to be going for, namely the second Katsiv. Here is Azuma Kazuyama still running 14th with that Nomoto engine and being involved in multiple crashes. I say that's the best race he's ever run uh, for a guy who's uh, kind of notorious for causing uh, incidents. He now has crash damage and is putting on the best performance ever, probably the best drive of the season so far, in this Tutino with the, uh, the Moto engine, which is why Kazuyama's in that car and why the Moto decals are on there. He's, of course, the third driver for the Moto team. Shane Lake cuts a tire after running in an awesome 11th place. This was shaping up to be his best Master Cup Series race ever to date. However, he doesn't get any breaks because the caution comes out in lap 52, putting Shane Lake a lap down. Here we are with Scott Stoidler and Tony Durbin again, the uh, apparent calamity cousins. They're both a lap down, fighting for position. Looks like Tony Durbin just had a better run off the corner, got into the back of Scott Stoidler, turned him around. I think that's kind of a racing incident, though Scott Stoidler's season has been less than stellar. Chris Johans leads in the restart. Alexis Rainsford is second. Azuma Kazayama is third. Neither of those cars hit the pit lane. There you'll also see the... Um, uh, car number two is Zach Duff all the way on the inside. Those two Volpes are very hard to tell apart from a distance. Duff is a couple of laps down after pits, after his pit stops have been anything but perfect. We're on board with Ian Cooper in the 777 car. Now, if you think this big pack can get through here uh, without causing a crash, you're kidding yourself then. Well, here we are with Lewis Kingston in car number 44. He looks like he's going to... Oh, wow, a little contact from Yulia Nasova. Nasova turned right into the back of Kingston's car. Brought out another yellow. Uh-huh. Not quite sure what that was all about. Chris Johans gets a great restart this time. Pulls a pretty big gap in the rest of the field. Taylor Silverman in the number 122 Omeka. This is the ex-Fortner bunch. Their day ends fairly early after mechanical problems take them out of the race, even though they try to repair it and they keep that car in the pit lane. Silverman does not return to the track. Luciano Salvarol is currently running in second place, and whatever points he gets, he's probably going to lose a fair amount of them because he did uh, run into the back of his team and under yellow. However, I'd say Salvarol is having a very good race so far, and so is Craig Mummert. We got another caution, however, on lap 70. However, this one was due to debris. I'm not quite sure what debris they're talking about, uh, but apparently it was uh, quite uh, a big piece of debris that nobody saw. Chris Johans led on the restart, and now everyone can make it to the end on fuel, I should point out. So I wonder if that had anything to do with things. Johans in the lead, the two Bolden drivers racing very hard over second place. Uh, here's Adrian Devereaux running in 29th place. He's well out of the points. Uh, Devereaux, under the old point system, I think would have a rather massive lead coming into this race. I think well over a full race lead. Vijay Pushan, now the Indian driver, the first Indian ever to start a TM Master Cup Series race, is running in tw is running in now 13th actually, and he is slowly sliding backwards. But this is still an awesome dr uh, drive from Pushanda. And here is Yulia Nasova, who last time by the stripe was scored 12th. This is a very very good day for some of the minnows in the TM Master Cup Series. Nasova having another top run in this 34 car. We believe there might be uh, the same engine under the Hodges Walter cars in this 34. VJ Pushand, on the other hand, is doing an awesome job in that uh, very slow Tutino here at this track. Chris Johans continues to lead, but you'll notice Franz Redlick has gotten around the Boldens, and he is beginning to run Johans down. Leonid Roderick in car number four, and the uh, sugar-charged car is, er, yeah, 
turbocharged car, excuse me, having a um, a uh, very spirited run up towards the top towards the top five. He's gotten around Craig Mummer, and he's going to make a run at Luciano Salvarelli. He sits fourth. Here's Franz Redlick in the closing stages of the race as he tries to make a run at Chris Johans in that 64 car. You notice Johans' car does not seem a little bit unstable coming over that bump coming in turn four, around turns five and six, and onto the front straight. Redlick seems to be able to make to have a run on Chris Johans, but you'll notice that the 64 car is just much better off the eggs of the corners. But we had a little bit of a spoiler to this race because we had a caution. Lap 98. Teammate of the year, Scott Stoidler, as his car blows up and he spews oil all over the racetrack, all over turn two, before finally pulling off the course. Boy, if that isn't teammate of the year, I don't know what is, because his teammate's in the lead, and uh, he just had the opportunity to bring out a yellow that would pretty much give Chris Johans the race win, because he beat Redlick back to the line. There's no way, no way they're going to get this race back underway with the amount of laps left. And Chris Johans takes home his second TM Master Cup Series win under some very interesting circumstances. Despite this somewhat tainted result, Chris Johans did lead almost half the race, 49 of 100 laps. Franz Redlick does a good job to finish in second. Luciano Savarol in third. Leonid Roderick finishes in fourth, proving that the drive for five is very much still alive. Craig Mummert rounds out the top five in a great drive from him. Although, once again, Mummert just slid back through the field when it matters the most. Robert Dorian has one of his best finishes to date, and I'm not mistaken, that might actually be his best career finish. Yamino Tenchi has a very quiet run, uh, squeaks into 7th place. Dale Roswell, ditto. Mike Whitmore, ditto. Yulina Sova, 10th place. Great job for the Cats of Engineering team. VJ Pushanda, best result for Tutino to date in car number 42. Comes home in 11th place on debut. Great job by the Indian driver to show his worth in more than just a Formula A car. Of course, winning a Formula A race and now doing very well in the Master Cup Series in his very short career so far. He will be racing in Brazil with the same team. Zelda Ashby finishes 12th. Bobby Porto, Alexis Rainsford in a return to the series. Still pretty sore. Comes home 14th after a very quiet run. Arto Kakinen in the sugar-free car. Uh, didn't exactly have the run he was looking for. Matthias Taub. Dan McKay gets his uh, first points. Scott Hamilton, Lewis Kingston, and Azuma Kaziyama makes it a double points day for Tutino. And let's have a look at the driver's points leaving Japan. 140 points back or more, you're done. There are only 11 cars are mathematically eligible for the driver's championship, but realistically, there's only five still in it. Leonid Roderick still kind of hanging by a thread there. 40 points is a bit much to make up in just two races. Adrian Devereaux, of course, is in the catbird seat. Marcus Leonard not able to gain too many points on him after he ran into trouble early in the race. Alexis Rainsford didn't, ex didn't exactly have the best race, but uh, she won't be racing Brazil, so that's not exactly going to help her uh, title ambitions, even though I don't think she's really seriously uh, running for it. Chris Shahans in that 64 car, I think, may be actually the biggest contender to Adrian Devereaux at the moment. Arto Kekin is at 76 points back. I have a feeling he's out of it. Uh, Ethan Everett had a disastrous race, unfortunately. Tom Delgado did as well. Karma came back to bite him after he uh, turned Ethan Everett in the first lap after he got into a tangle up with the two Bolden drivers. Ashby has had a very strong season. Avery Holtzman, I really wonder what's going on over there. Gessler, at the beginning of the season, he looked like a title contender, but he hasn't really looked anything better than lower midfield ever since. Uh, Karyala, really. And, uh, of course, Yamino Tenchi in the 831 car has had a very strong season, picked up her first win earlier in the year, but just not enough top 10 runs to really be a serious contender at this stage. Luciano Savarol, of course, the first driver out. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to get a points penalty of some kind. Scott Bates had an awesome run going, and uh, I'd look out for that 88 car. I wouldn't be surprised if he uh, does very well in the last two races. Brazil and Decatur are two of his better tracks on the circuit. Going a bit further down, Ian Cooper has not scored a point since he won Indianapolis, and Alan Hodges running just barely inside the top 20, eight points ahead of 21st place Bobby Porto. And here's how the Independence Trophy looks leaving Japan. Remember, the Independence Trophy concludes in Brazil, and only Jose Luis Martinez, Palmer Styles, Craig Yonser, and Carlos Donzello have a chance of improving their score for this year's Independence Trophy.